Thinking about buying a motorcycle helmet to do track days? You might want to think again. What's up everyone, welcome to the channel. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we're gonna to talk about helmets and track days. Now the, most, the two most commonly used helmets for track days are motorcycle helmets and car helmets. Although they may look very similar, they do actually oftentimes have different ratings as well. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is whenever you sign up for a track day, you wanna look at the requirements and see, you know, obviously you're gonna to have to wear a helmet and they're gonna require that, but do they require any certain uh, safety ratings. Now, I've been getting away with using this uh, older motorcycle helmet that I used to use when I used to ride motorcycles. This is a Shoei RF 1100. It has th since then been replaced with the Shoei RF uh, 1200. Anyway, this particular helmet is DOT and Snell approved, but it's not Snell SA. And uh, honestly, I've been getting away with using this helmet at the drag strip. I've also used a helmet that was very similar to this many years ago that was a motorcycle helmet out at Spring Mountain when it was Corvette weekend and honestly all they did is look at the helmet and they said okay you have a helmet great no further issues however when I last did my track day I believe it was uh, last year in September um, I, did re I did read the requirements out at Spring Mountain and this was actually held by the PCA which is the Porsche Club of America and uh, under the requirements it said that you had to have a Snell SA rated 2010 or newer helmet and uh, so I immediately looked on the back of the showy and of course it said Snell on the back but I knew it didn't say a Snell SA but I just figured you know I'll give it a shot maybe they won't really care so much and uh, so when I got there they inspected the car they asked to see the helmet showed them the helmet they said right away this is a motorcycle helmet it's not acceptable Luckily, I was able to find other arrangements and was still able to do the track day. Um, but when I got home, I started doing some research and uh, wanted to know what the difference between just Snell and Snell SA. You know, what is the real difference? Well, I ended up going to a place called uh, Big Speed, which is out in Henderson, Nevada. And uh, they carry a, a line of helmets called Race Quit. Now, this helmet retails for right around I think it was 350, 370, right around that area. But anyway, this one does in fact have the Snell SA rating of 2015. So this will actually fit the requirements for the PCA. And the main differences between a motorcycle helmet and say one that's actually for the car is this has a different crash rating or impact rating, also has a fireproof lining as well. So anyway, even though these are both high quality helmets, I mean, actually this motorcycle helmet, this RF 1100 was more expensive than this one. So if you've been using a motorcycle helmet recently and have been getting away with it, that's awesome. I don't really see the need to go out and spend more money and buy another helmet. However, if you do run into some issues or notice that they do require a Snell SA rated helmet, then highly recommend getting something like this. Now keep in mind there are cheaper uh, helmets out there. I've seen some online on uh, Amazon for as low as, I believe it was 169 for a Snell SA rated helmet. Uh, may not be the same quality as this particular race quip. And this one is actually the best at 15. So anyway, another thing you might want to consider is how tall are you and how much headroom do you have in your car? Now I have a Camaro SS1 LE. I also have the sunroof as well, which takes out some of the headroom. Honestly, the difference is I probably have about an inch to an inch and a half less headroom just due to the fact of the sunroof. And uh, I ar had already known that when I used my motorcycle helmet, when I put it on right away, I mean, I literally had maybe half an inch play between the top of the helmet and the top of the car. So I knew that when I went out to go buy another helmet, specifically, you know, for road racing or whatever, that that might be an issue. So when I first got to fix speed, I had planned on buying an open face helmet and uh, they had, you know, like I say, they had an open face. They also had the full face, which I have right now. But anyway, I tried on the open face helmet, put it on, asked them to go test fit in the car, sat in the car, and I mean, it was literally rubbing on the roof. And I was like, this is not gonna work. 
So I was a little frustrated and I was like, gosh, you know, I'm gonna have to try something different. So I went in and said, you know, is there any way I can try the full face helmet? You know, maybe it's not quite as tall or the padding is thinner, what have you. So anyway, I put that one on, sat in the car, made sure the seat was all the way down and uh, just barely had enough room. I mean, it's a little bit closer than I'd like it to be. I think I literally have about a quarter of an inch play. If I bounce up and down like this, I will barely touch the top of the roof, which isn't the best, but it's doable. So anyway, there you have it. Um, like I said, if you're going out to buy a helmet specifically for doing track days, best bet is to make sure it is an SA rated Snell helmet. Um, like I said, that way you don't have to worry about having any issues. Well, that's about it for today's video. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. If you're checking in for the first time, please subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video.